So in this video, we're going to look at uh, factorization of uh, other more general quadratics. And what I mean by that is, for instance, ax squared plus bx plus c is a typical, uh, most general quadratic that you can think of. So all quadratics uh, fit, fit into this particular uh, generalization that you see here, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. So uh, what we're going to look at is, uh, in a previous video, we looked at, um, I mean, uh, or other videos, we will look at, for instance, difference of two squares and perfect squares, uh, for instance. So uh, let me just list very quickly for you uh, that uh, there is, of course, the idea of the difference of two squares. So that means we have a situation like this, and that can be, uh, so sometimes your uh, quadratic looks like this, and that can be split into this, a plus b into a minus b. And then there are perfect squares, of course, which are uh, something like this, so a plus b squared, and there is, of course, a minus b squared, and so on. But um, we will come to all of these at some point uh, later. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at ax squared plus bx plus c, how we can split it. Um, you know, our objective is going to be that this uh, should be equal to something, for instance, um, x uh, plus, uh, say for instance, um, <clears throat> uh, some number d into x plus some number e. So this is going to be, uh, basically this is going to be our objective. How can we actually factorize it into a product of these two uh, entities that you see here? So the way this works is as follows. Whatever, uh, basically, we're going to consider this as a general quadratic. So essentially, what you have to do is, now, there are two ways to do this. One is a very straightforward way, which is using the quadratic formula. So we could use, for instance, uh, the quadratic formula to do this. Uh, let me just rub these out. So one way, one way uh, could be using the quadratic formula, which we will not do uh, here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that how do we find this d and e? So we're going to try to see if we can find uh, this uh, d and this e such that any quadratic can be split into uh, this. So the way it works is as follows. There is a trick, essentially, and what it says is that uh, basically uh, what you have to do is um, you take the product of these two numbers, a and c. So in essentially d and e are such numbers that when you add d and e, the, the sum should be equal to, in fact, b, okay? This b that you see here. And also, if you multiply d and e, then that should be equal to the product of a and c, where this is the a, I mean, this is the a and this is the c. So this is how, the, so we have to find these magic numbers, d and e, such that they satisfy this uh, criteria. Maybe it's better if I show you with an example. For instance, if we look at um, the case, so I'm going to look at a few examples. So the first example we look at is, because there are various, there are a few variations of this. So let's look at x squared plus 7x and plus 12, for instance. Now in this case, remember, if we compare it uh, to the top, we will notice here that uh, here you will see that the number here is 1, okay? So A is 1, essentially. B is 7, and C is 12. So we're saying that, here, I'll write it down here. Uh, here. So A is 1, B is 7, and C is... Look, it's basically going to be guesswork. Uh, I don't want to get into the algebra because the algebra for trying to find these is more difficult than trying to actually solve this. So basically what everybody is taught to do is to just use guesswork here. So think of two numbers that add up to give you 7, for instance. Well, uh, the obvious one that comes to mind is, the first one to me at least, is 4 and 3. Okay, There are other possibilities, of course, uh, 5 and 2, for instance, um, uh, 1 and 6, for instance, and so on. Now, what you have to do is quickly do a, a, a calculation. So 4 and 3 is 7, that's good. But the nice thing is that 4 times 3 is 12. Now that is a perfect uh, two uh, set of numbers. Now if I were to go with 6 and 1, for instance, you will see that it doesn't work. 6 and 1 is 7, but 6 times 1 is 6. So, and similarly, 5 and 2. So 5 and 2, okay, 
also doesn't work because uh, 5 and 2 is 7 but 5 times 2 is 10. So let me just say that doesn't work and that doesn't work. So we've got our champion and the, and the, the magic numbers are 4 and 3. So just to show you 4 plus 3 is 7 and 4 times 3 is 12 which is perfect which is what we are looking for. So this means this means that our factors are in fact uh, that we can say that uh, x squared plus 7x plus 12 is in fact equal to x plus 4 into x plus 3. Okay, and you can indeed check this because x times x is, you can check it, x times x is x squared, there you have it, x squared, plus uh, we'll have 3x plus 4x is 7x plus 4 times 3 is 12, so it works. Let's look at another different example, slightly different uh, example. Uh, and this one will throw in the complication of having a negative sign here. Okay, so this is minus 10. So this means that basically uh, A is again 1. So let's just do that. So we've got our uh, comparison. So A is 1, B is 3, and C. Uh, it's better to look at the product first. So like it's, 5 times 2 is positive 10, okay? So we might go with either 5, uh, one of these has to be negative. So we'll go with 5, okay, and minus 2 in fact. Okay, so now if we take 5 and minus 2, the product of 5 and minus 2 is minus 10, which is correct. And 5, if we add them, so 5 minus 2, because remember it's negative, so 5 plus minus 2 is just 5 minus 2. So it's equal to 3 and 5 times minus 2 is equal to minus 10. So we've got a winner. So this means essentially we end up with this situation that x squared plus 3x minus 10 actually turns out to be equal to x uh, plus 5 into x minus 2. Now you must preserve this sign. This is these two. So you see the 5 is positive, the 2 is negative. So here you see in the formula x plus d, x plus e. So plus 5 but minus 2. Let's go now and do another example. And this is, and I'll leave these here so that you can see each one what we're doing uh, and what situation we face that is different. So here we'll go with minus 7x, the same example as before with the same numbers but actually that example is different because we've got a negative sign here. So once again, if we do the comparison, we'll see that A is one, B is minus seven, and C is 12. Now, let's continue, uh, and again, let's look for our sum, D plus E. This time, the sum must be negative, and the product of D and E should be a positive number, and that's 12. Now that immediately should tell you that um, two, uh, two numbers that should give you a negative sign can only be positive. Now, I mean, the only possibility is that D and E both be negative. So they both must be negative because when we multiply uh, two negative numbers, we get a positive number. If one of these was negative, we would get a negative number here, which, which, which is not possible. So as I said, this is guesswork. So we think uh, uh, we uh, boil it down to the last uh, the, the final possibility essentially. So this means we need two negative numbers. So we need two negative numbers, okay? So we need two negative numbers. So let's look for these uh, two negative numbers. So uh, immediately we should think what numbers uh, 12, 6 and 1. 6 and 1 seem to be, oh sorry, 6 and 2. Uh, 6 and 2 don't work. So we'll go and think uh, what else is possible and um, four and three working. So next, let's do one more example and we'll end with that. So in this final example, we're gonna look at, and remember the category we're looking at is you'll see always ones here, one here, and one here. So all of these, I should have said this in the beginning, uh, but anyway, here I'll show it here. So all of these are cases where this A you see here, this number here A, we're looking at all the cases where A is one. So this particular method doesn't work for if this A was say two or three. So we'll have to, yeah, there's a different video we're gonna look at 
uh, next stage and those types of examples later. So this is the third, fourth possibility in, an, in the case where a is always one. So x squared minus three x minus 10. So in this case, of course, we say d plus e is equal to minus three and d times e is equal to minus 10. So that means we need two numbers. The second one tells us we need two numbers that when multiply, give us a negative number, which means that these two should have an opposite sign. So you need to have an opposite sign. So let's think of two numbers. Well, where five and two are there. So either minus five and two or five and minus two. So let's see, the sum of minus five and two is minus three, which is good, which is what we want. But the sum of five and two is three, which is we, we don't, that's not what we're looking for. So this is not the option. So that leaves us with our winner, which is the numbers are minus five and two. So these, these are the pair of numbers we need. So that means essentially x squared minus three x minus 10 is equal to x uh, minus five into x plus two. And that is the factorization of this uh, x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now you can go ahead and check all of these and hopefully they're all going to be correct. Uh, but like I said again, I'll repeat myself, please note that this, what you've seen in this video is for when we see this general quadratic, as long as a is one. So we fix a at one, uh, these examples are for a equal to one. In the next video, we're going to look at what happens when a is left open and is any number. How do we factorize that? That we're going to look at next. Thank you.